I built this cabin back in 2015, and despite having absolutely no clue what I was doing, it still stands strong today. Over the last nine years, I've developed a lot of great systems for living off-grid. Everything from having hot running water to electricity, keeping the place heated, and using the bathroom. And today I'm going to show you what a day in the life looks like living out here at my cabin, off-grid in Alaska. The cabin is a 16 foot by 20 foot, with an 8 foot loft, an 8 foot porch, and an 812 pitch on the roof. Every day starts the same out here at the cabin, making a nice strong cup of coffee. Just a quick reminder that all the music you hear in my videos is totally original. It's written by me and my friend Forrest Wilson right out here at the cabin. If you like the music, you can download it on my website at alaskacabinadventures.com. I can't remember the last time I made pancakes, and after looking at the expiration date on the box, I can see why. Oh well, it's mostly just flour anyway, right? We'll see what six-year-old expired pancake mix tastes like. For those of you who are wondering, that's the Clever Coffee Dripper. It makes a great cup of joe, especially for one person. You do a nice coarse grind and let it steep for three or four minutes, and it comes out fantastic. I've gone through a few different refrigerators out here at the cabin, but ever since I got this battery-powered EcoFlow refrigerator, I haven't looked back. I really like that it's not plugged into the main system so that you don't get surges in the electricity. The battery power will last for about two days without being recharged, and then once I do need to recharge it, I simply plug it in with my generator or my power station, and I get it back to full in no time. In the winter months, which is most of the year here in Alaska, I'm able to keep a cooler outside that has all of my deep freeze items. One day I'd love to dig down and build my own root cellar, but I've got a laundry list of other projects that are going to come first. It's no secret around here that I'm pretty particular when it comes to making eggs. The two things you need to know to make a good egg is low heat and lots of butter. Oh yeah, and about that expired pancake batter. Yeah, it was pretty gross actually. It was pretty rubbery and didn't have a good flavor at all. I wouldn't recommend it. One of my favorite simple pieces of equipment out here is my hot pot. It's a great way to have hot running water. All you need is hot water and gravity. Since my wood stove is going pretty much all the time in the winter, I just take the hot pot, put it on top of the wood stove in the morning, and then by the time I'm done with breakfast, I've got a nice big jug of hot water. Let's go, buddy. Remember, this is a totally dry cabin. It doesn't have any plumbing whatsoever. And so when nature calls, you gotta make your way out to the outhouse. And on those mornings when it's negative 20 or even negative 40, that can be a little bit daunting. But I gotta say, you get pretty used to it. And Norman's always happy to keep you company out there as long as he gets a treat when you get back in. I'd say one of the number one comments I get on my YouTube channel is people telling me I don't feed my dog. Well, I'm here to tell you, I feed him quite a bit. In fact, we feed Norman four times a day. We give him a little snack first thing in the morning around 5 or 6 a.m., and then he gets his full breakfast at about 9 or 10 a.m. After that, he gets dinner at 5 or 6 p.m., and then he gets what we call a midnight snack before bed. We like to give him little bits of food incrementally throughout the day instead of a big meal all at once. It's much better on his stomach and his overall health. Being a husky, Norman cares about running more than anything else in the world, and so keeping a nice trim figure is really important for him to stay in good shape and be able to do the thing that he loves the most.
This bucket underneath the sink is the closest thing that I have to indoor plumbing. After it fills up, I simply take it outside and pour it out. Over the years, cabin life has really taught me to be more tidy. It's such a small space in there that if you don't keep up on it, it gets bad quick. But the nice thing about such a small space is that it also cleans up really quick too. The wood stash in my cabin is the most important thing to keep on top of, and with the warm weather I've really been slacking on it lately. As you can see, I didn't have a single stick of wood left in there. I have three firewood caches at the cabin. I have the small one right next to the wood stove, the one on the porch, and then the large firewood store out across the driveway. I enjoy cutting firewood, and I enjoy stacking firewood, and moving firewood, and restacking firewood. It keeps me warm and it keeps me in shape. I suppose I could work out a system that's a little bit more efficient. Maybe keep all my firewood stacked up right against my cabin. But you know, that's got problems too. You'll get rodents and a lot more fire danger, pests, mold, things like that. And I don't know, I just feel like my main goal isn't to do as little as possible. My main goal is to actually do as much as possible. Seems to me that in the modern world, for most people, convenience is king. You don't have to drive your own car. You don't even have to pick up your own groceries. Hell, you barely have to think for yourself anymore. And don't get me wrong, conveniences can be great. Same with technology. Here I am talking to you fine folks over the internet on a YouTube video. But I just think that self-reliance is becoming a thing of the past, and I'm trying my hardest to rediscover it out here at the cabin. After the long, dark winters with bone-stabbing cold and deep snow, these first long sunny days in March just feel fantastic. They really make you feel like you're coming back to life and starting to thaw out. My wood stove is a Drolet. The make is an Eldorado, which I don't think is in production anymore, but what's so great about it is that you can get it really close to combustibles without needing a heat shield. In fact, this has a 4-inch clearance to combustibles rating, meaning that I can put it right up against the wall and not have to worry about burning the place down. With the surplus of snow that Alaska has to offer, I never have to worry about running out of water in the winter. And in the summer, I haul water up from the pond. Another one of the many projects I'd like to do out here one day is some kind of rain collection system. But it's a pretty low priority for now. Like I said, Norman's a husky and he loves to run. But I think that the only thing Huskies love more than running is pulling.
One of the most incredible parts about Alaska is the extensive network of trails that crisscross around the entire state. So much of Alaska is completely inaccessible by car, so instead people use snow machines, dog teams, off-road vehicles, airplanes, and all sorts of other things to get around. Snow machine trails like this one can be found out in the absolute middle of nowhere. They cross over frozen rivers and lakes, mountain ranges, all thanks to the brave souls who pioneer those routes every winter. Good boy. After a cold beer on the porch, it was time to get back to work. I've been really pleased with the woodshed that I built this fall. It's held up really well and I've only had to restock it once. I'll tell you what, it's a good thing I built this woodshed when I did. A couple days ago I noticed my old woodshed was starting to lean pretty bad. And with a closer inspection, I discovered that the massive snow load it was holding up had actually finally broken the supports on this thing. This thing's pretty much a gigantic heap of garbage anyway, but I didn't want to see it come crashing down, especially with all the wood in there. That would just be a big mess. So I got the shovel out and got to work shoveling the snow off. However, the snow was so heavy and solid and compact that it was like concrete coming off the top of it. And it took a lot of work just to break the snow up enough for me to be able to shovel it off of there. With the crisis averted for now, I decided rather than try to fix that thing up, I would just leave it. And in the spring, I'm going to tear it down and probably build another woodshed similar to my new one. The vast majority of the wood that I burn out here is spruce and birch. The spruce burns hotter and quicker, and the birch burns slower and longer. Having a mixture of the two is really nice. I use the spruce to get the fire started for kindling and different things like that. And then when I want to choke the fire down and have it last all night, I'll put a big old piece of birch on there and just let it simmer till morning. To me, the word off-grid means that you live off of any kind of utilities grid. This of course would include electricity, and so for years I used this little 2000 watt Yamaha generator to power my cabin. It's been an extremely reliable engine. I absolutely love this thing. Great option for off-grid power. It's got more than enough juice to push my lights, TV, coffee maker, anything that I've wanted to use at the cabin. But it also has some downsides. The first being that it's noisy. You're always hearing that roar of the generator in the background even when you have it on a long extension cord far away from the cabin. The other thing is that it requires a lot of gasoline to keep it going. I mean, granted, it's only about a gallon a day, but still in five days, it's five gallons of gas that you have to go fill up and haul back to the cabin. So I decided to upgrade to this EcoFlow power station, and man, what a game changer this thing is. I'm able to power my entire cabin for about two to three days on a single charge with this unit which saves me a lot of money on gas, but it also saves me from having to wake up in the morning, start the generator, and then go back out and turn it off at night. It's also just so much better to have peace and quiet out here at the cabin. You get to hear the birds and the wind and the sound of nature instead of the drone of an engine. When the power station does run out of battery, that's when I fire up my generator and charge it back up. It only has to run for an hour and 15 minutes before that power station is back to full charge and I have two to three more days of peace and quiet. I do have a small solar panel that plugs into that power station as well, but it's not a very big one and I haven't got very serious about it yet. If I got a couple more big solar panels and placed them in the right area, I think I could pretty much eliminate the need for the generator altogether. All right, let's feed you dinner. Come on.
Tonight was going to be a special dinner. This might be one of the best recipes I know how to make. And it's pretty simple too. All you need is a bunch of fresh veggies, some chicken stock, a can of evaporated milk, creamed corn, and a nice piece of Alaskan sockeye salmon. I suppose you could use any salmon for it, but certainly not that farmed garbage that they put food coloring in. I can't believe just how many people were appalled by the paring knife I was using for cooking in my last couple videos. Everyone was hollering, you need a chef's knife, you need a chef's knife. Well, my old man saw your guys' comments and decided, you know what, he does need a good chef's knife. So he was kind enough to buy one and send it up to me. And I gotta say, it really does make a huge difference. You put that thing on top of a potato and you almost don't even know it's there. But like all things, just because I have the right tool doesn't mean I know how to use it. I definitely have a long ways to go in my culinary skills. I don't know about other dogs, but Norman loves carrots. I think it's just that they're so crunchy. A Weber grill actually makes a pretty good smoker if you know how to do it right. You gotta get all the coals off to the side so there's no direct heat on whatever it is you're cooking. I even smoke up an entire turkey on this Weber grill every Thanksgiving and it comes out juicy and fantastic. But tonight I'm smoking up this nice piece of sockeye salmon. I caught this fish down in the Kenai River this summer. Me and my wife go down there every year and catch our limit, which is 35 for the household. It's one of the great bounties that Alaska has to offer, being able to go down and scoop fresh Alaskan salmon right out of the ocean. And if you're curious what it looks like, I've got a video on that too. In case you haven't already guessed what I'm cooking, this is my smoked salmon chowder recipe. And the trick is to only smoke the salmon enough to get the flavor of the smoke in there, but not actually cook the fish. If you cook the fish before it goes into the pot, it'll come out a little tough. So you keep it raw on the inside with a nice smoke on the outside. That way you get a really nice flavor and a good texture once it hits the soup. Ever since Norm was a puppy, he's had a pretty sensitive stomach. And if he ever eats people food, it's an unpleasant experience for all parties involved. But salmon is one that he seems to be able to eat with no problem. Up until recently, the only stove that I've had in here was a tiny one that came out of an RV. It did a great job of burning the bottom of whatever you were cooking and leaving the rest raw. So I finally upgraded to this hot point stove. It's a 24 inch propane range. It does take electricity for the igniters and starting the oven, but you don't need it to run the cooktops. The only thing I don't really like about it is that the oven doesn't use pilot lights, it uses some kind of glow plug. And so when it kicks on, it draws up to 450 watts of electricity and it can drain my battery pretty quick. I wish I had known that before I bought it.
After playing some banjo, I looked up at the night sky and realized that there wasn't a cloud in it. So I decided I'd start a campfire and see if I couldn't catch a glimpse of the northern lights. After sitting by the fire for a couple of hours, I gave up on seeing the northern lights. But if I had seen them, it would have looked something like this. Years and years ago when I first got to Alaska, I was hired as the cameraman to go along on a beaver trapping expedition with the native Athabascan people of Alaska. It was an incredible experience that I'll never forget. Where they live, they don't call it off-grid living. There is no grid. They just call it living. I learned many things from them, and one of the things I learned from them was how they wash out in the bush. After we had been at the beaver camp for about 10 days, one of the elders, or the Keshka as they call them, came up to me and said that we were going to hop on the snow machines and head back to one of their cabins, about 50 miles upriver for a sauna. A sauna, I thought. Well, that sounds relaxing. Little did I know, out there, saunas aren't really for relaxing. They're for washing and bathing. I'll never forget the look on those guys' faces when I walked into that sauna with my underwear on. They busted up laughing, and I said, what? What's so funny? And they looked at me and they said, I always knew white men were weird, but I didn't know they washed with their underwear on. Anyway, ever since then, I wanted to have a wood-fired sauna of my own, one that I could wash up and stay fresh and clean with. So after a long day out in the cold, I like to fire that thing up, sit in there, and think about those incredible people. That taught me so many incredible things. I'm not usually one for sweets, but tonight I thought, what the heck, I'm gonna have some cinnamon rolls. Well, just remember everyone, if a clueless kid like myself who grew up in the suburbs can carve out a life in the wilderness, you can too. It's just about putting one foot in front of the other and making your dreams become a reality. And don't forget, if you guys like the music, you can download it on my website at alaskacabinadventures.com. I've also got a new line of merchandise on there with my dog Norm on it. So if you guys want to help support the channel, hop on there and find yourself something you like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode.